Editing takes a long time. A good edit takes me 12 hours and a complex edit takes me about 20 hours, sometimes more. Because of that, I wanted to optimize my storage workflow to be as fast and seamless as possible. For the last 12 months, I've tried all kinds of external storage solutions. If you're an upcoming video creator, I think you're gonna like this video because I'm gonna compare the portable hard drive over here with a solid state drive over here. And I'm also gonna compare it against a NAS, a network attached storage solution. There are three areas we're gonna look at. The first one is price. The second one is storage capacity and the third one is read and write speeds. But first of all, let's make the case for getting an external storage for your Mac. If you're like me and you use Final Cut Pro, it will use up all of your internal storage if you let it. It fills it up with render files, proxy files, and if you're editing with 4K footage, it just eats it up even faster. Why else should you get an external hard drive? I think it's important to get an external hard drive because it keeps your internal hard drive clean. And what I mean by that is you can organize files and folders exactly the way you want to and it doesn't get mixed up with your work or personal stuff. Another benefit of external storage is that I can edit from another machine in a completely different location and I've got all my stuff there ready to go. If you're interested in being nomadic or you think you'll work in more than one place, then there's definitely a case for getting an external storage device. Okay, so this video is gonna be a little bit of a story because buying external storage isn't as simple as you might think. My first hard drive was a very popular hard drive. It's called the Western Digital My Passport 4 terabyte. Now this is the best value option for external storage. It's at a low price point, which makes it super accessible for most creators. Something to think about here is you've got the option of a 5,400 RPM hard drive or a 7,200 RPM hard drive. Most of them are 5,400 RPMs and that equates to about 100 megabits per second read or write. And if you go for a 7,200 RPM hard drive, it equates to about 150 megabytes per second read or write. Those speeds aren't okay if you're an editor. Like, they're just too slow, especially if you're editing in 4K. It was nowhere near the speeds that my internal SSD was doing on my Mac. It was clear to me after a few months that something wasn't right. The speeds were too slow. There was this latency where I had to wait for the hard disk to fire up. Plus it had an audible hum and it took up a lot of space on my desk. So I decided to buy something called a Synology disk station. And this is a network attached storage system. You can see at the back, it's got an ethernet cable and a power cable. And those are two, the only two cables you really need. Inside the bays are two four terabyte hard drives, eight terabytes in total. In theory, this is the real deal. You've got storage in the cloud, you're cable free, and there's something called a RAID system where if one of these disks fails, then there's another backup of of that disc, which is sweet. The prices for these devices can vary quite wildly, so it's hard to give an estimate. It's definitely not cheap, I'll put it that way. My experiences using the NAS was using it wirelessly, not with an ethernet cable, and that's because I don't have an ethernet port in my computer. This was a mistake. My editing speeds were no longer limited by the read and write speeds of the disc. It was limited by the bandwidth of my internet connection because the computer was communicating with this NAS on my Wi-Fi, And because of that, I had so much lag and so much idle time in Final Cut. It made things even worse than it was before. Also, this was much noisier than I was expecting. I kept the NAS in my bedroom and it was like this server that was running 24 seven and I couldn't go to sleep without hearing the noise of this thing running. This was worse than when I started, but it was a lesson learned and I learned a lot about network attached storage solutions at the same time. Enough was enough. I I decided to splash the cash and buy a SanDisk Extreme SSD. This is single-handedly the best upgrade I could have made. It's exactly what I'm looking for. The first thing you notice is that this is tiny. It's about the size of a credit card and as thick as an iPhone. I can throw it in my backpack or I can put it on my desk and I barely notice it's there. It's capable of extremely fast speeds, like a gigabit connection. I found very little difference between this and the internal SSD of my Mac. I know the internal SSD is much faster, but for the sake of editing in Final Cut Pro, I didn't know it's that much of a difference in my real world experience of using it. Something to note is that SanDisk offer an extreme pro version of their SSD and that promises double the speed. I think it's 2050 megabits per second, but I wouldn't recommend it. And the reason why is because you can't actually transfer that quickly between an external device and your Mac. You're limited to the speed of the connection between them. Another thing I love about the SSD is that it's silent. I don't have to put up with any humming noises and it's responsive, like instantly responsive. It's so fast. The biggest drawback of course is the price Price, it is the most expensive storage solution I've tried so far. Another drawback is that because this is two terabytes, I'm inevitably going to have to upgrade to a bigger SSD or a second SSD at some point. I'm going to have to cross that bridge when I get to it. In the meantime, this is serving me just fine. I think two terabytes is more than enough for the next year or so for me, especially if I start to optimize the files that I'm storing on my SSD. At the moment, I store everything and anything. At some point, I'm going to have to be a little bit more careful about what I'm putting on there. Since upgrading to an SSD, my edits take me so much less time. 
time. And there's two reasons why. The first one is that transfers between my SD card and Mac and then from my Mac to my SSD are lightning fast. I'm not sitting there waiting for ages and twiddling my thumbs. It is so, so quick. What took me like a 20 minute transfer I can do in five minutes. My workflow in Final Cut Pro is now super smooth because I have so much less idle time and render times are so much faster. I'd highly recommend you make the jump straight to an SSD and avoid the headache like I did. This is an investment worth making just like your microphone would be or your camera lens. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm a beginner video creator and this was my experience. I'd love to hear what external storage devices you guys use or if you've gone and purchased an SSD, then let me know in the comments. I'd be thrilled to hear it. Thank you very much and see you next time.